Hey everyone, so paper 2 is coming very soon and I hope you have been revising by doing all your TYS, right? That's the thing that should get done as soon as possible uh, so that you can feel as most prepared as possible. It's like the basic thing to do, okay? All TYS paper 2. Um, as for the answer key, the assessment book that you can buy on popular usually is quite crappy answer key. A lot of students complain. So we have free TYS answers that I made for my students I've shared to the public also. It's free and it's pretty much model answer, perfect answer, as, as perfect as possible. And to get it, just search that BioTutor VIP club. I think if you just search that BioTutor in Telegram, you should find our channel. And then just join the channel, okay? So the link is t.me slash that BioTutor VIP club. And then you just click on the pin message. It has all the links. It's not just this. We have other stuff free there also. Uh, and the TYS answers, I think is the most useful thing to you at this period. Okay, so this is a ba basic kind of revision thing that should be done. Okay, now let's say you're done with that and it's one day before the paper two. So paper two is going to be on Monday. It's at 2 p.m. So afternoon, right? That means your morning time, you actually got some time to revise also. So keep that in mind. Plus Sunday night, right? Um, around the two hours, three hours before you sleep, what should you do? Because it's kind of dumb to try and cram and rush all content or rush papers at this period. So what is the best way to prime yourself and prepare yourself the day, the night before, the morning of that paper too, and during the exam itself, what should you do? Okay, so that's what I'm going to give you here. These are the so-called last minute tips, okay, one day before the paper too, what to do. And yeah, okay, there's actually a lot more that um, is in bonus number seven. Later I'll talk about it. Right, so, oh yes, just wanted to say, this is the most important paper because it's 50% of your grade. Okay, so not only the weightage is high, right? But this is the single most defining paper separating those who are A1 and those who are A2, B3 and so on. It really differentiates people because even if your content is good, right? You can score full marks in MCQ. But if you don't know how to word it and phrase it and write the right keywords, you may not score high in paper too. And so that is why this is the most important paper. It really differentiates people. Okay, so all your hard work, all those hardworking students who have been diligently studying, clarifying your doubts and asking me questions and been training your open-ended, like this is the chance for you to shine and differentiate yourself and get that A1, whereas other people who are not so skilled in paper too will fall behind. Okay, so this is the most important paper. Please put that into perspective. Therefore, please get enough sleep before the paper. Okay, so let's get into it. The first thing I will do is I will spend about one hour, okay, maybe the night before, right, Sunday night, going through mind maps and just to check that I've covered all my bases. Because sometimes we bias, we study certain parts of the topics and then we forget certain parts of the topics and we just like, you know, let it be one side. Then what if that small part comes out? Then you're like, I should have revised this, right? So how do we cover all our bases? Okay, so if you are our student, in that bio tutor, we have these bonus notes for you. So if you see in bonus number one, all my maps, and you will find these. So let's say the topic of cells, right? You can see all these parts of the topic. And let's look at, um, oh, smooth ER, okay? Synthesizes fats, steroids, and does detoxification. Oh, I forgot that it does detoxification. Okay, so that is an example of covering your bases and how the mind maps are very useful in that. So if I forgot about smooth ER, right, then what I can do is I can go to the notes, I can go to cells, and I target that specific thing that I realize I need to revise. So I just read this part. Okay, then I read, oh, okay, blah, blah. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, so that's how we revise. Instead of reading through all the notes, like uh, cramming it, that one, like, what is actually important? And then most of the time, your brain will be like, I know this boring, 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 right? Your brain will always be like boring. So you might actually miss out those important stuff. But if you do it this method where you take this bird's eye view first and then you find and you try and uncover every stone, you're like, okay, I know all this. All right, next one. Okay, oh, what's cremated? Uh, I kind of forgot that. Then you can go back to the notes and then um, you know, learn whatever you need to learn. So this will do. is like the last content revision where it's like, imagine a jar, right, that's full of um, big rocks. And then now what you're doing is you're pouring in sand to fill in all the tiny gaps in the content that you have. So I, I believe that at this point, most of your content is very good already. It's the big rocks are there. It's just that in between, there's little gaps, right? So this is what we're doing. We're identifying the gaps and then filling them up. 
it's targeted. Okay, so that's one hour. I will spend around one hour. If you need less, then good. Okay. Next step, I will look through all my corrections. And this one, uh, especially, I would bias those which have been marked by school teachers, by your school teachers, like prelim paper, like uh, whatever WA that you did. Because when you self-mark, right, may not be as reliable, okay? So that's why I would bias the, the ones that the teachers have marked. And then I will compile all a list, a very rough one, don't need to look nice, a rough list of notable mistakes that you made, notable misconceptions that you made. For example, you, you thought that self-pollination is se age at sexual reproduction. Then you're like, oh wait, that's wrong. Self-pollination is sexual reproduction because there's fertilization. So any notable mistakes like this, right? Misconceptions that you made, you, you write in your list. Any careless mistakes that are also notable, please write also. So I give you one example is if the diagram points to one mitochondrion, in a cell, and then it asks you to label this, and you write mitochondria, then you will get wrong, because that's plural. Mitochondrion is singular. So that's one example okay, of notable mistakes to write down in your rough list. And really, it's uh, not meant to look nice. <laughs> it's just for you to explicitly tell your brain, hey, I made this mistake before, I don't want to make it again in the exam. Okay, and you can read this rough list before the exam also. Okay, then next, um, this is again for my students who you have access to the bonus notes. Okay, so bonus number four, OEQ answering techniques. i like you all to read that. Um, it shouldn't take that long, only like 15 minutes. It's all those good practices. And like you see, it tells you about command words. What does it mean? What, what, what are you expected? Okay, compare and contrast what it's supposed to do. Data response questions, look at how we describe, some ways to describe. Okay, so um, all these things, read in bonus number four. Because we're preparing for the OEQ paper, right? Okay, then bonus number five, make sure that all memory shortcuts you have checked off, like you know everything. So if you don't use my memory shortcuts, okay. If you have a substitute one, good, right? As long as you've memorized everything that you need to memorize and you have a good way of doing it. So for our students, you have this one, bonus five. It just compiles all the memory hacks and memory shortcuts. So what, what's the difference, right? Memory shortcut is like an acronym or a mnemonic like this, where you, you see like it's a big chunk of content. Then memory hack, right? It's a small piece of content of how to remember something. So one memory hack is um, ciliary muscles. How do you know if they contract or relax? Okay, so if I look near, like right now, you are probably looking at the screen, right? So the screen is quite near, and you've heard parents and old people always saying, Oh, you know, if you look near, you're straining your eyes. It's bad for your eyes. Okay, they are kind of correct because when you look near, you are contracting. Strain means contract, right? Like strain. Imagine like straining against a heavy weight, contracting. So ciliary muscles straining are contracted to look near. It is true. So that's a memory hack. It's an easy way to remember a piece of bio content that otherwise will be quite difficult to figure out on the spot. Okay, so make sure you memorize all memory hacks and memory shortcuts. If you've been our student in our classes, you will have known almost everything already because we go through in our lessons. So just check off that you really do know everything, okay? Like, you can test yourself. So if I was you, right, I would say, oh, okay, this is the pathway of nerve impulses. I raise several racing cars, making every race perfect. Then I would hide the answer. And i say, okay, I stands for incident, R stands for receptor, S is sensory neuron. Like that, okay, test yourself like that to check it off. So you should be you you will be much more confident if you know all the memory shortcuts you have memorized before you enter the exam okay like all these right are advantages they are boosters they are helping you so why would you not take advantage of this advantage haha <laughs> get it get it okay so if you are not our student you have our free notes right all these things are also still inside the notes it's just not so nicely compiled in one place okay but it's all inside the notes if you are not our student okay um next thing i will do is I'll spend one hour really understanding, studying the exam smart hacks in bonus number seven. So bonus seven, exam smart hacks. It's just about how to be exam smart, time management, okay, time management. And later I'm going to tell you something about the, the CAQ's time management. Okay, like, um, okay, MCQ you can read for paper one. Don't need to be now, okay? Because this is a paper two. Yeah, so... 
um, there's even this video. If you go to our YouTube channel, I'll get my editor to put both these links, right? The, the VIP club, the Telegram channel link, and the YouTube video link of this one uh, in the YouTube video of when, when this is uploaded, okay? So that y'all can easily watch. So this YouTube video, uh, I made, it's not everything inside bonus number seven, but it's some things have been covered in bonus number seven, some principles, especially on time management. I think that's the most important time management uh, because if you are really good in content and your skill in writing is also very good for open-ended, but you just don't finish the questions, you will die, right? You will, you'll get horrible grade. So I think time management is the most important one to take note in this. Okay, now this is on the way to the exam already. It's Monday itself. It's the day itself. Um, what to do? So, if I were you, I'll go through bonus number six, all misconceptions. Now, if you're not a student and you don't have this, remember what you did earlier? This one, uh, you made a rough list, right? So, now you will look through your rough list, okay, on the way to the exam. So, for our students, I have compiled a list of common misconceptions. And, like, you can see how many exclamation means, like, if, if three exclamation means, like, every, almost every student, uh, has that misconception based on my experience and answering students' questions. Okay, so all these, you just read through all of these. So I give you an example, see, all plant cells have chloroplasts. Some students will be like, yeah, correct, but plant chloroplasts make, make, uh, make food, photosynthesis. But it's not true, not all plant cells have chloroplasts. Actually, a lot don't have. Xylem don't have, phloem don't have, uh, roots don't have, and even the, the cells within the stem, right, also don't have. Right? Right? So, so many plant cells don't actually have uh, chloroplast. Even the leaf, the upper and lower epidermis, epidermal cells don't have chloroplast. Okay, so that's a common misconception and that's why I made this entire page, common misconception. So that hopefully it will save you a few marks, right? Next one. Um, <clears throat> on the way to exam, I would also revise definitions. I would rapid fire revise definitions. So for our students, you guys have my Quizlet flashcards that I've nicely packed all the definitions in one place for y'all to revise. And flashcards are very good for memorizing. So I want you to rapid fire the, your way through all the definitions, as many as you can. Uh. And don't like think too much, okay? When you're when you're doing this is a rapid fire round. And don't need to go like, oh, I need to re-memorize that. It wasn't perfect. No. It's like, even if you didn't get correctly 100%, after you read the answer, then you just move on already. Okay, we are trying to quickly refresh your memory because sh honestly, we, we are using the short-term memory here. Okay, we're trying to leverage on your short-term memory before the exam with these definitions. That's why the rapid fire. Okay, then let's say you reach the exam venue already. Okay, of course, please make sure to go to toilet and try not to leave, right, to go to toilet during the exam. That will really suck. Um, oh yeah, and don't drink too much coffee. This is also all these things, right, are in my bonus seven about don't drink too much coffee, okay, and uh, because it can make you you know, pass motion. <laughs> so <laughs> imagine that you, you need to do that during the exam. That would, that would waste a lot of your time. Okay, exam itself, right? Here's what to do. Okay, when they say, okay, you can start writing. You, before, before, you, before you even like, you know, they, they say start writing, right? I would flip the paper opposite. So I'll be ready to open from behind. Okay, then when they say, okay, you can start writing now, I'll open from behind. And then I would do the essay questions at the back. Okay, why, why do I do that? Because usually the essay questions at the back, okay, by the way, it's either or, so please choose one, <laughs> don't do both. It's usually a CAQ, a very high mark allocation, like six marks something, CAQ. CAQ means commonly asked question. Okay, so in our notes, if you, ask, if you have the free notes, right, you have the CAQs for topics one all the way to six. Okay, so topics, um, sorry, CAQs, are common questions that keep coming out and there is a very predictable way to answer it. It's not weird, it's not, it's usually not an application question also and it's just very rehearsable. So if you study, it's free marks, okay? CAQs are free marks if you study. So that's why we want to claim all the CAQs as much as possible. The essay questions at the back, sometimes they are weird, sometimes they are data response, sometimes they are CAQ. So if it's a CAQ, and you're like, okay, I choose that question, then it's three marks, right? And it's such a big mark allocation, like six marks. Then do it now. Like, don't need to wait 
till the end of the paper, then you're rushing through, then you maybe miss out on this huge free mark question. So do the free mark questions at the back, okay, the essay questions. If don't have, then it's okay. You just go to the front and then you just go through like normal. Okay, so what about weird questions? Or like you just don't know, right? It's some, some strange question, application that you just don't know the answer. Okay, there are two approaches. Number one is if you feel like, wow, I don't even know what to write. I don't know how to start. Then just don't waste your time. Just skip first and dog near the page because there are CAQs waiting for you in the rest of the paper. So if you waste your time trying to figure this one out, this weird question, and you skip the CAQs because you've not enough time, then those poor CAQs will be like, why you never claim me free marks? You know, they'll be so sad. Yeah, so your, your grade will also be crying. Okay, so here's another approach. Let's say you kind of know what to write. Maybe you have some ideas, okay? And it's just that you don't know how to complete the answer. You don't know how to properly phrase the answer. So here's another thing you can do. You can just write whatever you can that's in your head, whatever ideas. Spam keywords, okay, that are relevant to the topic. And then you can dock near the page and come back later to improve further. Okay, so this one is like, okay, I don't really have time. Uh, I'm just going to do like a, you know, half past six work and... I'm not going to spend the time to really think of what's the correct answer, okay? So I'm just going to write and then move on already because I know there are CAQs waiting for me later. Okay, so the moral of this, everything that I'm trying to say about the paper, it's just you must finish all the CAQs. They are free marks, okay? And my last tip, okay, about spamming relevant keywords, I will also tell you the story. Some of you might have heard it before. Uh, when I was in SEC 4, okay, there was this guy in my class who I like no one really expects him to score uh, the highest grade. Okay, basically A, okay, just imagine it's like A1. And he he one of the exams, right? He's called A1. And everyone was so surprised. Like, what? He's like highest in class or second highest in class. And I was also very surprised. Because he's not like particularly studious person. And so I you see, I always try and learn from how people succeed so that I can copy what they're doing correctly. Okay, so I went to him, and then I said, can I see your paper? Like, I always do this, right? I'm always very careful, kiasu. Uh, whenever, like in JC also, someone got like almost full marks for the, or no, they got full marks for some econs essay. Then I borrowed her essay. I was like, can I read, narrate through? Then I learned, okay, so this is how to get full marks, you see? So it's a good practice to do. So I went to him, and then I read his paper, and then I noticed that every question, he was just writing a lot. Like, if it's three lines, right, three marks, you write like six lines. If it's four lines, you write like eight lines. Okay, he's just writing a lot. And then uh, as I was reading it, and then he told me, Keith, you know what's the secret for bio? Just spam. That was, that was his answer. Okay, so I thought about that and I was like, okay, well, if you just spam, right? And you write 10 lines, but it's all garbage. It's not answering the question. Then what happens? Zero marks, huh? So it shows you that you cannot just spam. You have to spam relevant keywords. Because relevant means it's answering the question. It's actually the topic and the concept that the question is testing. So always try to empathize with the marker. Like if you are the marker, what, what are they trying to test the students on here? Which topic, which concept? Then I can put relevant things. And then it has to be keywords, right? Not just layman terms, but keywords in the syllabus. So spam, relevant keywords. If you can just remember these three words, right? This phrase, for all your OEQs, then I think that's the most important tip you need to know, okay, for succeeding in open-ended questions. Yeah, and as for keywords, if you want a refresher, right, I believe at the start of every chapter, you see there's a list of keywords here. Then you can refresh all these keywords. All right, so all the best. Uh, I hope you all do very well because the exam schedule is in such a way that the paper two is quite spread out, right, from the other exams. And so you have like almost a week to just grind bio. Okay, so I hope y'all will do very well for bio. Okay, especially my students. <laughs> must be the must be the rest, huh?